Hello, Blessed Soul family, and welcome to our full moon in Aries Collective reading. Um, I have so much to say, yet I have nothing. You know, you know those times. So enjoy the scenery. And thank you, Amber, for the shout out. I do love making my little altars, my little sceneries for our readings. Um, I work with what I got. You know, we're still off grid in the RV, so I do my best. I try to make them as magical as I can, but sometimes I just have to, you know, like, <laughs> I can't control this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the window. I have to bring the light down. That's as much as I got with the black. It is what it is. And honestly, I'm okay with it. I've come so far. I used to be so controlling over things like that. I would probably lift that up and put fabric in it. And I'm, you know what? I'm tired. And I'm realizing how much I'm tired. And if you're feeling that too, you're not alone. We are in a very high intense sensitivity level energy. While the moon is conjunct with Chiron. It's a very sensitive time. And then, you know, we have the full moon in Aries. And Aries is ruled by Mars, which is the quote unquote war like, you know, war planet, the planet of um, destruction, um, but also of fire. We've got the fire energy of Aries. So there's a lot of different things going on. We're still in Libra energy, which is air. Um, I'm going to put a link below for an article that was just drawn to my attention. I, You know me. I like to research it. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, thank you for keep coming back. But you know, I do my due diligence when I can, when I have the energy. But my friends, my family, I am blown. I'm tired. I am... I'm out there. I'm doing my best uh, to keep everything going, but I really wanted to do this for you today. On my calendar, the full moon in Aries is tomorrow, but everywhere else they're saying it's today, but I can see where they would say that, you know, in terms of, you know, different parts of the world and time zones and all that good stuff. So um, today we are going to be working with the tarot deck, with a tarot deck. And um, you all know I'm not a tarot expert. I'm a medium that translates, you know, imagery. I know some about tarot. I have notes. I have things that come through. This particular book, um, as you can see, I've really loved it. And it's kind of messed up. Uh, the the Jeu de Vivre Tarot by Paulina Cassidy. And um, I love that U.S. game system. <laughs> Let the games begin. Every time I see this, that's what I feel like they're saying, right? Because it says U.S. game systems. And that even right there feels like a reading to us, like the U.S. game systems. Even though I know that's come across before when I've brought out the book, I'm just feeling like, you know, spirit wants to wants us to remember that that's really what this is. It's just a big game. I had an amazing, amazing day yesterday. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to share with you the magical day that I had yesterday. Um, we're going to get to so many things. Uh, we're going to read from this deck. We've got a lot of messages that want to come through. Um, the main theme is um, in this article, what really stuck out to me was about staying open and vulnerable with the Chiron energy. And um, also, you know, Chiron is the centaur, right? They're like half man, uh, half, uh, I think, horse, right? And they've got their arrow up high, which is interesting because I'm a triple Sag and we are the arrow. We are, that is more us. But in this energy right now, uh, it's all about fire. And Archangel Michael is the uh, Archangel of element of fire and also of the south. So if any of that means anything to you. So yesterday I... You know, the, it's interesting. Some days I'm easy. I can go with the flow. I'm like, sure, spirit. It's fun to me. It's a game. It's fun. I love it. And I relish in it. Other days I'm like, the game's over. <laughs> I want to, you know, get going. I'm kind of done playing this, you know, this muggle madness. I'd like to do something else, please. But spirit drew us yesterday to go to the farmer's market and the timing of it and everything was like perfect. 
and then they, which this beautiful pumpkin is from her farm, H-E-R. Um, and I'm going to give a shout out uh, to Libby and Sarah, but definitely to Libby. So, you know, we go there, we go to get our, you know, our stuff. And we've been trying to go every weekend since we came up here, but we have this really cool bond with them. I don't want to speak for them, but to me, they're very witchy, very magical, uh, magical creatures, whatever they align with. Very fairy-like, just beautiful earth, earth magic energy. And, um... So I think we've probably gone there maybe eight or nine times now, something like that. I don't know. I haven't been counting, but more than I can count. And they were by themselves. Libby was by, um, was, they were by themselves. So I could just tell they, you know, needed something. And long story short, they were like, hey, would you mind, you know, going and grabbing a coffee for me, you know, at this place and across the way. And I was like, no, I'm like, oh my gosh, of course. I'm like, it would be our pleasure. I'm like, whatever we can do to help, which I realized when I got home, I offered to watch so they can go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I just realized, um, I'm like, oh no, but it's not the first time they've been alone. So I'm sure people helped them. But anyway, sorry about that, Libby, if you watch these. Um, but we had that magical experience and then talked to the person at the coffee place. I can't think of the name of it right now, but I, uh, you know, I always like to plug people if I can and support them, but they're local. They're all local where I live on the North side of the peninsula. It's just, it was just like a magical experience. And I had all these different places that I wanted to go. This one person was having, instead of like an estate sale, they're having a fabric sale. I was really drawn to that. I wanted to go to that. I wanted to go to this estate sale. I wanted to go to this other place. You know, we still need um, all the appliances. We still need, you know, a sink, a uh, stove, uh, and, or an oven, and a um, uh, refrigerator. So... I heard from spirit to go to this flea market and I've seen it. We've gone by it. It's in this old pumpkin patch off the 101. It's super cool. I'm totally drawn to it, but I was like, mm, I don't know if that's what I want to do today. And it was just like, you have to go. Well, now I know why, because we were there for like, I think three hours and there was only like 10 or 11 booths set up. And we, I think we hit everyone and but some of them, we really lingered and talked and it was just, it was really amazing. Just really magical. I can like throw out a gazillion names and the people, but it was just really magical. But long story short, I was drawn to this last booth and, and when I looked in the case, I saw this. Now it's just costume. It's not real, but you know, I'm the moon goddess like this is my I was born on a Monday on a moon day and you know this is my, my my thing my channel is all around the moon cycle so I just thought it was really 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 cool I mean even here on the bracelet let me see if I can get in there you know it's like there's like two moons like on either side but it's just really magical and I was like oh I'm gonna wear that I'm like I can't wait you know um also another thing we got from there so this was so this bracelet was from Lenora and Cliff and I don't remember I want to say her name is Christine uh the sister I hope I'm saying it correctly um Lenora's sister I don't want to say the sister but Anyway, they were, they were family. And then we got this piece, this magical, look at this kyanite. It's what they call, I think he said, he said like a name for it. I think it comes from Pakistan, but it's a blue green kyanite. So I, I hope you're feeling the healing energies of it. And if you don't know kyanite, I highly recommend that you research it. I'll put it in the description box below. You know, I always put little gems there, little things for you guys to look up or follow but do you see most um of kyanite is opaque you can't really see through it but this one you at certain places you can it's so magical you should see it up in the sun it's quite 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 spectacular and we got a really uh beautiful wonderful price from it from jason and i'm sorry jason i forgot the name of his company but we'll be buying more from him so no worries but this wanted to come in we've got pyrite here in front um, we've got an apophyllite in the back. The apophyllite was really coming to me when I was at his place too. And this amethyst, this violet light amethyst wanted to come in. So these are the crystals that want to work with us, um, over the next, you know, moon cycle, or I should say at least to the end of this moon cycle, cause we're in the middle of 
the moon cycle, that's what the full moon is. It's when we've hit the cul the culmination, as you will, the highest peak where the moon will be its brightest. And right now my ears are ringing. Oh my gosh. So I don't know if you guys, if your ears are ringing, but there's just um, some cool stuff happening. A lot of magic is afoot. But I, I'm going to put a link to this article because one of the things they said in there, they were talking about um, really bringing, um, driving home the fact that that's the whole point. The full moon is the culmination. So whatever you've worked on, whatever you've done up until this moment, and whenever you watch this, it's timeless. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's the same message though applies to you that over the next like two to three weeks, take it easy until we get to, um, the waxing crescent on October 28th, when we'll be in the, uh, Scorpio season and the new moon in Scorpio. Okay. Because so much is going to be happening over the next, like today in real time, it's like I said, it's the ninth, the 10th, you know, but, um, for the full moon in Aries, but we've got one, two, almost, yeah, like almost three weeks, like two and a half weeks until the 28th. And spirit wants us to gradually slow down. The thing is, is fall, people start to gradually get more sped up because they're like, oh shit, like, you know, here are the holiday season. You know what I mean? Like almost any religion, whatever you follow, this time of year is a massive holiday season on the planet. From here until New Year's, uh, the Gregorian calendar, New Year's for like the next three months, really. It just, and I mean, and then you got Chinese New Year. I mean, you can go on and on. I mean, it keeps going. It never really stops. But this is the time, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, where we are in the rolling back and dialing back phase. And in the Southern Hemisphere, because we do have our tribe members that are from, we do have some tribe members from there. You guys are gearing up to go into, you're coming out of that energy and going into spring. You know, and I thought about that earlier today. I was like, that's actually kind of cool. Because it means that we can take an airplane, a boat, you know, whatever transportation will get you across the waters and the seas safely. We can take these transportations and pretty much be in almost any season we want. Because right now we're going into fall, but they're going into spring. So it's like there's different. Ooh, 1141 is our um, angel number. Also the number seven. I've been seeing sevens like crazy everywhere. So the seven means something to somebody or it's uh, an angel number. Either way, I'll put it below. Research it on your own. Um, but yeah, there's there's just a lot happening. You know, we've got the Venus star in Libra that's coming on the 22nd. And that's going to be an, ooh, I just got the chills. That's going to be another massive shift. So we are gearing up with the divine feminine energy. We are plugging forward um, into fall. And just because we're amping up in certain energies doesn't mean that we have to, um, you know, align with that, right? Meaning like, I get the vibe from spirit. And when I read this article, it was just hitting really, really hard that we really need to slow down. 1230 is another one. And oh, look at that. 1230, which is December 30th. So uh, from now until Mercury is going to go and retrograde again at the end of December. At that time, Mercury will be in retrograde. So I started um, pulling, I started spirit called me to shuffle. We'll talk more about this stuff as we go on. You know, that's why I like when we do pick a readings, we also do collective readings. Um, I don't do things, you know, some people are really regimented and they do the same readings all the time. That's beautiful. I rely on them too. I'm grateful for them. But for me, I'm a triple Sag. I'm fire and my moon's in Scorpio. So I go as the energy flows on the planet. And even today, like I had all this, I was excited to do this reading tomorrow on Monday because on my calendar, it says it's on Monday. It says full moon in Aries on the 10th. I have it on my calendar. So I haven't really been looking anywhere else. I've been so fucking busy. I don't have time to look anywhere else. You know, I normally do my due diligence um, of researching the astrology and things that are going on so that I can convey them to you and align them with our readings. But y'all have to do your own due diligence at this time because mama is beat. <laughs> I am tired. I have a lot on my plate right now. And, um, I'm just doing my best to stay afloat. I love, love, love our new house, but I am, if I'm not doing spirit work, I'm working on the house we're living in, or I'm working on the new house or I'm, you know, doing magical work or whatever. Um, but yesterday when we went to that flea market, it was so magical. All these beings that I met, almost every single person we met was super fucking magical. And I thought, 
how cool, what a fun way to spend our day. So we just like bought a bunch of little things. And then at the end, um, we didn't, before we get the cards, I wanted to just finish the story for you. So this bracelet that I got that I showed you guys. Okay. So the bracelet and, um, we got this, I have been looking for something for spirit because every meal I like to give some to spirit. And I used to have this cute little dish that we would put it in and it broke when we were living home free, um, in the campgrounds, uh, it broke. Oh no, it didn't break. It, um, it was stolen. That's right. It was stolen by raccoons. That's right. We used to, we were using it as like our little altar thing by the tree. Nothing touched it. No critters, nothing like they knew. And then like right before we left, like, I don't know, like a few days before we left, um, it, it just disappeared. It completely disappeared. <laughs> So I, there was a pack of raccoons that were hanging in our area. So we were absolutely positively convinced that the raccoons took it. So I'm like, whatever, man, it went where it was supposed to go. It was a cool little vintage, like Asian bowl. It was so cool, but whatever, it wasn't meant to stay with us. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't a human because it was there when we went to bed and it was gone when we woke up. So unless some human walked up there and was like, I have to have that in the middle of the night, but we were camping right next to it. How, but the, you know, raccoons are sneaky. I wouldn't be surprised if they did it. Also, angel number 1525. So we also got this. Look at this little bowl. I mean, it looks like a doll, like like a Barbie, like a dish for paella. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a big dish to feed many people. I, f I just love it so much. And it came with these cute little coasters too. Oh my gosh, it was just the cutest thing. So we got this for, you know... For spirit, which I'm going to throw some in right now. Some little gifts. Um, they were sitting over there, but we'll put them here as well. I got that. And then I have wanted one of those spiral vintage. They look like spiral stairs, vintage plant holders. I have wanted one for more years than I can tell you. And I've seen them or whatever, but they're painted or they, you know, whatever. This one was like the color, like the patina. I wanted everything. It was everything I wanted. And it said $20 on it. And I was looking at it and I was talking to my husband and I was like, oh, we ran out of cash. And I was like, dude, I'm going to cry right now. I'm going to cry right now because we need to find a way to get this because I was like, and she's like, you know what? I, I, I would do 10 on that. And I'm like, it was literally half of it. I'm like, oh my God. And I looked at him. I go, you have to go to the bank. <laughs> like, I was like, you have to drive into town and get money. I was like, I can't. I mean, it, that's like when you see it, it's like one of those that you'd see for like a hundred dollars. Like it, they're the, just the nicest people, the most beautiful, gracious. We had all these cool conversations about magic and, and, you know, Sasquatch Yeti, like just, it was just magical and got this bracelet all from them. And her husband was like, well, just get us next week. And I'm like, what? I grew up in Chicago, lived in LA for, you know, nearly a decade. I'm like, I lived in Portland. I lived in the Olympia area. I mean, I've lived in big cities basically was what I'm saying most of my life. And that's very rare that someone was like, you know, like Popeye, like wimpy, you know, for a hamburger today, we'll gladly pay you on Tuesday. But, um, you know, I have no money. But they had no, I mean, they were just so beautiful and so wonderful and lovely. And I was like, I will make a point. You know how much it came out to for everything? $13. When's my birthday? On the 13th. So just magic. That's what I mean. It's just like all these little things that, you know, spirit drew us to that flea market. And now I found a new crystal guy because I've heard things, you know, about the local crystal people. And they're like, I don't think you'll like them. And um, I was hoping to go there. I thought we were going on a recon mission for me to do readings there because it's only $25 a spot. It's like first come first serve at 8 a.m. And all these people knew each other. It was just amazing. And you could tell they, they, they trade with each other and stuff. And then I met this awesome woman, Judith, who I got this beautiful portrait of Judy Garland. Um, hold on. Okay, all I did was put the picture in. This little magic right here is all Judy. And because I, I was just like, oh no, I'm like, we have to move the pumpkin. I can't put Judy, you know, like, uh, I'm like, well, hold on a second. I'm like, hold the phone. We got to bring the witch's potion back over here. So let's move that around. Okay. And we're going to move the pumpkin over here. So you can see Judy. But Judy Garland is one of my spirit animals. Like she's seriously one of my, my, my spirit guides. And there are a lot of, I actually have a lot of celebrity spirit guides. It's very, very, very interesting. Um, I just thought that they would come in and visit, but I'm like, no, like Judy, like for real is an angel. She watches out for me. And whenever I'm having a really tough, oh, I just got the chills. I love you, Judy. And, um, whenever I'm having a really tough time, like summer of the rainbow will come on. Just, just a lot of magic, um, around her. And, 
so I met this, and the woman who sold this to me, her name is Judith, and she was like a fairy queen. And just, just magic. Seriously. She has like this toilet paper holder that um, I'm going to buy from her that has like this fairy on um, flying on a bird. I mean, just like cool shit because we, we decided to turn our bathroom since they, we have to get the bathroom. We're going to do folklore. That's our theme is folklore. Um, and so we have mermaids and witches and cool stuff going in. But it's just, just the way our cool, just the way everything's coming together has just been really magical. I, I feel so honestly, just ridiculously blessed beyond belief. And, um, and the funny thing was, is that I really, as much as I love this picture of Judy, which she gave it to me for a dollar in the frame. It's so cute. Um, the sad thing is, is like, if you look like her eyes are actually really sad. She looks really vacant and it, it broke my heart in a million pieces. She actually looks like she's either stoned or like she just got done crying and they like made her do something. I was like, maybe she just had one of the many abortions that they forced her to get. Like, if you don't know Judy's story, you really, really need to research it. And Renee Zellweger as Judy was unbelievable. Um, if you haven't seen, uh, that yet, but she's absolutely a witch and gifted and, um, interesting that, you know, she played Dorothy, with the witches and all that, you know what I mean? I feel like this wants to come over here, but I mean, just all this magic, I've just been feeling it and, and absorbing it. And October is the season of the witch. So, you know, really hone into that energy, you guys, and lean into the sadness, lean into the, you know, like, think about this. This was a famous print of her where everyone's like, look at her. She's breathtaking. I'm like, yes, to the naked eye, she's breathtaking. But if you look in her eyes, she is fucking not happy. She is a sad, she is out there. She is not, it's just horrible. She suffered horrible, 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 horrible things that no one should ever have to, you know, go through. So with that being said, spirit is saying, be open and be vulnerable over the next few weeks. And if you don't want to do something, put your foot down and say, no, thank you. Not this year. You know, the pandemic really knocked us all off our gate and now everybody's just gone back into regular life and some people can do that and some of us are realizing that we cannot go back into there's no such thing as oh look at that fairy thank you spirit thank you judy um there's no such thing as regular life anymore you know it's like that's why this wanted to come in the amethyst we need the healing there's still a lot of healing to be done <clears throat> you know the pandemic uh was powerful yes but also it was um very disturbing for a lot of people who've never had to deal with certain things or never had to be alone for that long period of time there's so much i mean there's ptsd like nobody's business and speaking of let's talk about the people who have ptsd who had to deal with that or the soldiers or people who are like locked in their home who've you know or someone who was kidnapped or raped in a closet and they were like kept in their home and they didn't realize like that you know a lot of shit came out and that's what this whole energy this moon in conjunct with chiron and full moon in aries all this energy right now this is a very sensitive time um this is all here to guide us and show us like what, you know, our past and to heal it, really heal it. Our first card that we're coming out the gate is the queen of swords. And as you know, I love to, um, read from this book. This book is amazing. Look at her face. Talk about, <clears throat> right? Like to me, I feel like that's who, um, Judy really is. And that would make sense because Judy was a Gemini. So swords are air, are air signs. And maybe that's what Judy is like. Don't be like me. And interesting how um, uh, some of my cards once in a while, like something will get on it. And I wrote things, um, not on the back of this one, but when I was, when I got this deck and I was starting to learn tarot, this was the first tarot deck that, I, I mean, I've had other tarot decks, but this was the first tarot deck that I actually started studying with. And, um, like the imagery and everything like spirit gave me so much. So, you know, take from the interpretation of it that you want to take. And of course, those who understand and know tarot, you, you know, and understand what the queen of swords means. But I think it's interesting that, um, you know, I did that. And then the keyword for the queen of swords is tenacious, tenacity, right? And that's exactly how Judy was, right? Like she had to be tenacious. She couldn't, she had to be able to, um, you know, actually, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let the card speak for itself. And also I heard from, um, she wants to go back here. Judy, um, said that 
she wants you to research Tenacious on your own. So I will put that in the description box for you to research on your own. For some of you, um, that needs to be, uh, I don't know if it's going to come out in the book or not. Okay, so the Queen of Swords is about independence, learning, authority, rational, and intuition. Which is actually very interesting because um, that kind of reminds me of the Aries energy, which is ironic because it's an air, you know, sign. Um, but if you bring air and fire together, man, that can, right? It's like a fire can be almost contained, but if a gust of wind comes in, you know, those firefighters are like, fuck, you know what I mean? Because it's like, it's going to do what it's going to do. So interesting. Um, rational and intuition. Okay. So Queen Tenacious, the Queen of Swords, is the great warrior queen with a look. Oh, I got the chills because this is the warrior-like energy, right? Like that's what an Aries is. They do have like the warrior-like energy. They go into everything, you know, guns a blazing. They don't always do all the research, right? Like, or they may do the research, but they're not like, you know, thinking, oh, maybe this wouldn't be a good day to do this or I'm going to do what I want to do, right? Then <laughs> they kind of, you kind of can't tell an Aries what to do in my experience. Now, we all have different signs in our chart and, you know. And we may be in Aries, but have more Libra, you know, um, but either way, you know, there's definitely, um, uh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do energy. So this aligns very much with the energy that we're in right now. Beautiful. And that's what they're saying. So use this energy, this tenacious energy of the queen of swords, the great warrior queen with a look of piercing assurance in her eyes. She stands strong and self-reliant, a garden of roses and thorns decorate her hair, symbolizing her balance of tenderness and force. Dignified and analytical, she always gets to the heart of the matter with wisdom and clear-headed observation. Conflicts of, conflicts of the past have earned you wisdom and spiritual death today. And that's so powerful because weren't we just saying that? We were talking about like we're trying to bring the past, you know, we're trying to heal from that. We're trying to heal from the past. And I feel like for some of you, either Judy Garland, like you have this picture of her or like your grandmother really loved her or something. And I feel like there's, there's or there's somebody in your life that very much uh, resembles Judy Garland. I feel like this is really at least one person. I'm, I'm My chills are in my body. My, my medicine bag over my heart chakra is just like exploding. So, um, you know, talk about tenderness. It's like she was so beautiful and tender, yet she had to be ferocious and warlike. She had to carry on, even though she was a Gemini, you know, she could carry on the different roles, that part she can do, but she also had that kind of like insecurity because Aries, you know, the Aries are wonderful and, and full forward, but then sometimes they have that regret, right? When they have that kind of like, oh, did I, I, I should have waited or I was a little impulsive there, you know, and that kind of, you know, energy. Well, it's like Judy was, uh, she was an, a programmed robot, a machine for the man, for them to make money off of her. It was really disgusting. It's like, she was like a Britney Spears too. It's like, I feel like Britney is kind of like, the, like, this is where it stops. This has been going on, you know, for decades. This is where it stops. No longer will you abuse our bodies or tell us what to do with our bodies or, you know what I mean? Um, I think, I don't know how many times Mickey Rooney got her pregnant because he wouldn't wear a condom, you know, like, fuck you, asshole. Like, you know, I'm sorry, Mickey Rooney. I know, like, in the end, he was very, you could tell, like, I saw him, one of his last interviews, he spoke about, like, in very real tears, like, how much he was ashamed of his behavior with her and how much he really loved her and that they were more like brother and sister and, like, in the end and all this stuff. And, um, yeah, it's just fascinating. So, you know, there's obviously some connection there for you guys. And I'm feeling like this old movie connection, too. I have the chills like hardcore. 2748, if any of those numbers mean anything to you. Okay, so, you know, the conflicts of the past have earned you wisdom and spiritual depth today. That's right. You have depth now. You have that depth. If you, if you didn't go through those experiences, you wouldn't be as strong as you are. You know, it's like, and Judy's like, don't fucking die in a flea bag motel in London like I did, you know, like not just in London, but you know, she's American. Like she ended up dying across the pond, so to speak. She didn't even, you know, it's like, it's like, who was she? She didn't even know who she was in the end. Uh, she was so lost because, you know, no one ever really allowed her to be herself the way she wanted to be. Protect your viewpoint and fight for what is yours. Use the power of your mind to determine what needs to be done. So yeah, exactly. Like Judy is literally like coming in to speak with us and say, Hey, I want you to have a better life. I want you to have a better story than mine. You have the power. The next card is, oh, I have the chills. The sun. 
And it's also um, the 19, which is if you add one and nine, it's 10 and 10 all about completion. So I feel like this full moon in Aries is giving us like exactly that. Like some of us are coming to the end of something We're look at this. They are, they are doing good. They're happy, but the sun doesn't look super happy. I don't know why. I feel like we need to, to look at this card for a minute because we've got a seahorse. So look up seahorse spirit animal. Whenever there's animals in the cards, I always highly recommend you look them up. And I believe this is a little mouse. But then they've got their heart, right? And Spirit was saying to stay open, be vulnerable, work with your heart chakra, wear the color green. See, look at that. It's in their heart chakra right there, that light. Bring the light back into your heart because some of you, you know, um, I'm feeling like so sun is also representative of Leo. So I feel like some of you like Leos have had a tough go. I just read something about uh, astrologically that. So if you're a Leo, I'm so sorry you've had such a tough time. Um, or if you have a lot of Leo in your chart, heavy Leo in your chart. Um, I was reading this article about how the last few months have been super tough on Leo, you know, uh, I'm a, like I said, I'm a triple Sag and I think it was like six months ago or something. There was like, it was the same thing. It was like just months. And they're like, man, Sag, you guys are getting beat to shit. They're like, but they're like, it's going to come back around. You're going to be fine. Like everything's going to be good. And, um, it's the same for you. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Just hang in there. Take it easy. Don't go as fast as, you know. Also, the sunflowers are here too. It's fall right now. We're in the Northern Hemisphere. Get yourself some sunflowers. And no matter where you live, if you can get some sunflowers, get yourself some sunflowers to brighten your day. I don't normally like to cut flowers or, you know, hurt any living thing, but um, the sunflowers have been coming to me a lot lately too. And I had two bunches back to back and they did. They made a big difference and I used them. I used the petals, you know, for decoration. Um, but yeah, and the seahorse also, uh, represents, you know, the seahorse is in the water. So it could be, you could be a water sign too. And I'm going to put this here. Oh, and their names are light and flare. That's why I wrote them on the bottom. Okay. So let's see, see, like I didn't write that on there, Leo. I'm almost positive. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I never claim to be, uh, you know, perfect at this. Judy is so gracious. 3126. She's so gracious. She's like, you know, you can, you know, put more focus on the car. It sounds like, oh, love her. Okay. So enlightenment, energy, growth, vibrancy, and bliss. Drifting through the heavens on a sky seahorse named Light, Flair carries a message of cosmic love and joy. His heart holds a flaming connection to the sun itself. With a childlike perspective, Flair's intentions are pure and his energy is vibrant. The sun with its life-giving power and warmth banishes the darkness so that you may see your path with clarity. The sun's energy will cleanse and energize your spirit. So carry the spirit of the sun within and carry it with confidence. Bubba's eating. She says hello to everybody. She's so funny. Um, your inner strength radiates when you allow your highest qualities to shine. Yeah, and the reverse of this card is uncertainty, selfishness, a burning out of energy, and what were we just saying? And I feel like some of you feel like you're being selfish, and maybe you are being selfish, but if you feel like you need to be selfish right now, you know, it's just what you're going through, and it's really none of anybody's GD business of how you handle it. This is your life. This is your story. You are allowed to speak your truth. My whole body is chills right now. This, this is one speak your truth, you know, throat chakra, you know, we spoke about that a lot and, um, my throat chakra isn't exactly tight right now, but I definitely felt it after I said it. Um, so the next one is the page of coins and it's in reverse and look at that. Do you see how the sun is like the coins here, but it's almost like, right? Like they, they can't capture the sun. It's like it's upside down and they're, they're going towards the sun and spirits like, yeah, that's what you need. You need to go towards the sun. We're going to put this in front of the witch's potion. It's time to go towards the sun energy. By the way, spirit is screaming, healing, 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 healing over and over and over. So this is a time of healing. The page of coins, their keywords are fascination, determination, curiosity, resourcefulness, and learning. Okay. Now we have two cards about learning. So there's obviously something that you guys need to continue working on. Maybe it's a craft that you're working on. I just got the chills again. Um, this is a mass message for everybody. So take what's yours and leave behind what, you know, doesn't work for you. But in reverse, it's saying straying off course, rebelliousness, being too eager to give unwanted advice. 
So um, I know for myself, that was me yesterday. You know, at first it was like, it felt like there was a good flow with, with people. But, you know, by the time I was like around all these crystals and there was people buying crystals and stuff, I was like, I felt like I was out of control. I was like, I felt like the scarecrow when he gets his brain, so to speak, the placebo of it. And he's like, four score and seven years ago. And he's like, becomes really smart. It's like all of a sudden I was like, all these things were channeling through. And I thought, I, afterwards I got in the car and I'm like, did I just talk too much to people about too many things? And he was like, no, you're fine. He's like, but I can, you know, like he always says like he can see that. So, you know, acknowledging it is half the battle. So, you know, and maybe I did give unsolicited advice, uh, that people, you know, who knows, but, uh, you know, but I, it's good for me too. Is basically what I'm saying is like, this is definitely hitting for me. Um, but I know I'm on course, but are you straying off course? What is happening for you? You know, it's like, it's like, we've got this, obviously the balance isn't there and we've got masculine energy, right. With light and flight. And then we've got the feminine energy of the queen of swords. So maybe this is them trying to tell you to get balance, right? Because we've got in, in the upright position, we've got, uh, these little bunnies, right? We've got these little bunny, there's bunnies here. There's like these flying there's like, I don't know if that one's a bunny or a mouse. Maybe it's a bunny too, but you know, we've got these cute little creatures. Sorry, I'm trying to get in there so you can see them, but the light's there, you know, and then we've got these little flying, they look like pieces of candy with little faces. They're so cute. I love this deck, by the way. It's so playful and childish. And this is how I feel like spirit wants us to be, right? I'm going to read the upright version of Marvel. That's their name because uh, they deserve that. So it says, Marvel, the page of coins, lives and breathes every activity with fasc fascination. Attracted to his childlike enthusiasm, a succession of friends joins him. Thoughtful and curious, he reaches for a glowing coin. Seeing endless possibilities, his good instincts and inventive mind lead him to great opportunities. Expand your horizons by looking for new ways of approaching things. Enjoy life's journey by reconnecting with the things you love to do. Your passion and your brilliance will be rekindled. Yes. And also, um, I heard from spirit. Yes. When I was saying that about the balance, cause we had one up here and what there now this, see how this is more balanced. It's like, I feel like your masculine energy is balanced, but the divine feminine is not. And this month of October, whenever you watch this are always timeless, but this month of October, Oh, how funny. Um, they just said, Judy is the other one. So we are, so that's the whole point, right? So we've got two feminine and two masculine. They're trying to remind us to get in balance. Thank you, Judy. Also, if you guys, Judy Tenuta, she's like one of my favorite comedians of all time. She used to have this show. Oh my gosh. I just just heard she died. I don't know how she died, but I was like, Judy Tenuta. So this is for Judy Tenuta. I'm all over Judy's today. Um, so we're pulling another one. I thought we were done. The six of wands. Now wands are a fire, right? So we were talking about Aries and, um, we've got coins, pentacles, we've got swords, air, cause uh, coins and pentacles are earth. So the page Marvel is earth. Then we have air back there and now we have fire. So, um, the sun is, you know, our source, but that would be fire as well. So, um, we've got two fire here, which there you go with the Aries and the Chiron with the moon and conjunct with Chiron. That's all really interesting. Okay. So here is pizzazz and delight. So any of these, the rabbit, you know, the mice, this is another mouse. And look at, we've got, look at the little jack-o'-lantern down there. Love it. Love it. Love it. When they said they wanted to do this deck, I'm like, I just got all my decks back. I have so many like Halloween witchy decks I was excited to use today. And they're like, no, this one. And now I see why. Look at that little sweetheart. So the six of wands, the six of wands. Let's see. Pizzazz. There we go. Ooh, nice. Okay. So the six of wands in reverse is unrecognized efforts. <clears throat> oh, the throat chakra is coming again. Arrogance and pride, fear over the outcome of a situation. So I'm hearing from spirit that some of us are allowing our past to hold us back. I remember we were just saying we want to release that now. So in this moon cycle, it is time for you to, to set the intention to release the past. Release that which no longer serves you. Release fear. Fear is a man-made construct. We know this. And it is literally the only thing that's holding you back. You are the thing that's holding you back. There's no, You can blame anybody, anything, but it is you that is holding you back. Okay? Now, this may resonate with some. This may not resonate with everybody. But 
Um, some of you, I feel like you're the unrecognized efforts. You're just, you're fucking fed up. You're just like, I'm tired. Like I've been doing this forever. Nothing's ever going to come of it. And I've been there. I understand. I still have those moments. I still have those moments. I get it. Right. But the arrogance and pride comes from our ego. And it's our ego that thinks that we know better than spirit when spirit is trying to show us like who we are and what we're here to do, you know, that we all have a purpose, right? It's like even Judy's suffering as horrific and fucked up as it was, it held a purpose. You know, she had to be who she is. She had to, you know, she chose that path. She chose to be that leader for the Britney Spears of, of the world, you know, to say, Hey, you know what? It's really gross. What you did to me. I'm not a machine. I'm a human being. I have feelings that hurts when you treat me that way. It hurts when you talk about me like that, you know, call me crazy or whatever. Some of the things that they said about Judy Garland after she died, I'm just like, Oh, I was so angry. I was just like, it's so gross. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? She was that way because of people like you that are making fun of her that made money off of her, right? But there was always a light behind her, always taking care of her and showing her the way. She chose to see it or not see it. That's what she's saying. Like that was her choice, right? She wanted to go for that brass ring. She could have stopped at any time. She could have gone and lived a quote unquote regular life, a normal life or whatever. It's like they're, they're her choices. That's what she's saying right now. Like she's not a victim, she was a victim. She was treated, you know, whatever. But it's like at any given point, she could have taken different paths, but she chose what she chose. And a lot of it is because she's showing me that her childhood, she was stunted because she started at such a young age. She never really became very mature. You know, when you see pictures of her, I'm, it freaks me out that I'm three years older than her. And when she died, she looked like she was 20 years older than she was. She was 47, but she looked more like 67 and a rough 67 at that. And she shouldn't have had to look like that. So spirit and Judy are both saying like, don't be like me for real. Like, because the keywords for the motivation or six of wands are motivation, victory, success, grace, and recognition. You are going to get all of the recognition from whomever you're seeking it, right? We are all seeking recognition for different things or different purposes, different people, situations. You will find it. It will come, but it's going to take time. And it says delight is experiencing victory after overcoming obstacles. Is that the right one? Do I have the right one? I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So pizzazz must be her little friend. Okay. I just want to make sure I was reading the right thing. Delight is experiencing victory after overcoming obstacles. Butterflies, a symbol of her metamorphosis, flit out from under her hat. Pizzazz, her little mouse friend, stands proudly on her candy cane wand as she dances with a triumphant heart. By resolving issues in a diplomatic and graceful manner, satisfaction can be achieved. Through hard work, you begin to accomplish the, su the success that you've dreamed of. Recap, ooh, I love that, recap. Another like looking back and like sealing it up. Reap your rewards and enjoy your fruits of victory. Because the fear over the outcome of a situation is it hasn't happened yet, right? I mean, in some places, yes, it's happened already. So if, if you look at it like that, it's already happened. So why stress so much? It's just going to find its way to you no matter what. Whatever is meant to find you will find you, Okay. And I think it's interesting, too, that we've got the rabbits, you know, in here, these little flying rabbits, because rabbits are all like one of their key words is fear. So with a lot of these animals that, you know, and even the air seahorse, right? It's like we've got we've got two air and two fire, technically. And then we've got the page of coins and earth. Oh, we just lost our. Um, oh, you know why? I just I just realized because I forgot Hi, you guys. You can kind of see me. Um, I forgot to put my phone in airplane mode. That saves like so much. So I had it going this whole time. So I apologize for that. Um, but I think it's interesting. Well, and even so, look at the way she's shining. Like she's, she's like, we're good. We don't need any more. And same with Judy. She's like, I'm in the background. You don't need to see me. But like, see, Judy and I, we're the same. Like I'm in her image and she's in mine. We really are one. And when we start looking at each other with the same compassion that we have for ourselves, it's so much easier 
to let go of the pain, the suffering, the hurt, the guilt, the, the, the blame, the, all of it and, and being the victim because when we're the victim, it's just easier, you know? And like I said, I mean, some people might think this is really fucking sick, but you know, I, there were times that I think my mom enjoyed my getting a rise out of my dad or getting, you know, like him hitting her because she got to play the victim. She got to play a certain role, a certain part, maybe not during it, but like later on in life, like I would see it, I would see how she would change. And, and not just because like, well, wincing like that happened to me, cause that did happen sometimes I saw that in her, but then there were other times where I would see her totally fucking playing it. And I was like, dude, you have played that card long enough. You're not a victim you know, like, um, it was a hard time. I know. And I'm not taking that away from her. I was there and, um, and every blow that my mom felt, uh, I felt it too. I'm an empath. I mean, I would be screaming like, stop, you know, I would feel it. It was intense. We all have baggage. We all have shit is what Judy's trying to say. All of us. Are there any more messages, but we can't take it with us into the future. You know, time keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking into the future. I know those aren't the exact words. Um, I think it's time keeps on. I'll try and find the song. It's an old 70s song. I think skipping, skipping into the future. But that's the whole point is we have to release it and let it go. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of this tribe. I hope these messages helped you in any way. I am in gratitude. Let me see if spirit, I have this card that came out earlier. I want to see, is this for us? Is this like our last? Okay, no, it was just for me. Do we want to pull any more cards from any decks anywhere before we go? Nope. That's it, you guys. Those are our messages. Until next time, take really good care of yourselves and each other. All of my information is in the about section and in the description box below. And I'll see you next time. Blessed be. Oh.